Hey, what's up, YouTube? You already know, it's All City Live TV, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the best gold badges that you can equip on your player after patch 10 in NBA 2K20. I know a lot of people are really frustrated with 2K, and the way they handle Puma Mania was a complete nightmare. You have people such as myself get up so early, either call out of work or rearrange uh, certain occasions to play Puma Mania and grind it out, and then 2K completely cancels the event with about 60 hours left in uh event time so you know people are really frustrated and they're really discouraged with their experience playing nba 2k20 especially when you have one of the best events completely shut down on you we're not here to talk about puma mania but i wanted to kind of give an update on what happened with puma mania from what i hear there was an eight times rep glitch people were glitching the puma mania event and getting up to eight times rep earlier on in the event and puma i, I guess matter of fact 2k just said you know what we got to shut this down but i think there's a proper way of approaching this being that you got consumers and i think 2k tends to forget that we are their consumers you know and you got to learn to treat your consumers right i think they take for granted that we're just a player base and they forget the aspect of us being consumers and we constantly spend money on vc and microtransactions let alone purchasing the game in itself so from that approach, when a company tends to forget that you're the consumer, I think where you need to hit them is in their pockets. If uh, if you have an opportunity to limit your spending in microtransactions, please consider doing that. So that way you can kind of speak the language of 2K or speak the language that is 2K, and that's money. So if you could kind of answer back with limiting the amount of money you're spending on the game, maybe 2K will learn to actually communicate better with their consumers and player base all right so we're gonna get on into these go badges we're gonna go through each category finishing shooting playmaking and defense and rebounding and we're gonna see what are the some of the best go badges that you can equip on your player in NBA 2k20 we're gonna get into all of that and more right now let's get it all right, so let's get into these gold badges. The first category we're going to go into is finishing, man. And I got to tell you guys, I have a love-hate relationship with finishing badges and finishing in the paint in 2K20. Now, I, don't get me wrong. When I'm going up for a dunk, I'm kind of satisfied with my dunk completion rating. But uh, as far as layups are concerned, I got to tell you, man, I have an 84 driving layup and I also have a 69 three-point shot. And it's unfortunate that I have more confidence in my 60 three-point shot hitting than my 84 driving layup finishing successfully in the paint so I got to tell you that I've been going through uh, like a tremendous amount of uh, changing, reallocating this, these finishing badges because it, there's no level of consistency there. And I'm not the only one because I'm constantly getting questions and comments. Why can't I finish in the paint? You know, if I go up for a dunk, it changes me into a, a layup animation and my layup animation doesn't complete. So, you know, I'm, I'm always getting that out there. And I got to tell you, man, some some of the best gold badges to help with completing layups we're gonna go into that we're gonna go into the best gold badges that I think are, are available for finishing. Now I'm a 6'5", two-way slashing playmaker point guard, so take that into consideration when I'm speaking about these badges. But I do get an opportunity, being that I live stream every day and we have a highly active Discord. If you're not familiar with our live stream, we live stream on five different platforms simultaneously every single day. Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, DLive, and also right here on YouTube, so come on out. But um, also our Discord is highly active and if you want to join our discord and get information about the game or what's going on badges and bills things like that you could join our discord and stay connected with us uh there's there's like an, a great information resource so i get to hear a lot about other players and how they play their badge setup such as like a paint beast considering a paint beast a lot of people are out there that want to know how a paint beast would be able to finish in the paint and what badge setup he has so 
I'm gonna just go through what I know for finishing and as a point guard at 6'5 trying to finish I love the acrobat badge the acrobat badge uh, does have some layup animations tied into it and the higher you go the better your completion for hitting these difficult layups such as hop step spins euros cradles and, and just like change shot uh, or change hand layup animation so acrobat is a great uh, badge for reverses and things like that so you definitely want to consider the acrobat badge back down punisher I'm not exactly sure how good if you guys are utilizing back down punisher in the paint and NBA 2k20 after patch 10 please let us know but from what I've noticed I don't see a lot of bigs out there uh, dominating with back down punisher because the animation takes too long and by that time you're getting spammed so let me know what you think about back down punisher consistent finisher uh, from my experience with consistent finisher I have this as high as it can go at gold and I still miss layups so uh, it's, it's really frustrating when you have the proper badge set up and like I said I have an 84 driving layup you can tell me with an 84 driving layup you had acrobat consistent contact all three of those badges alone are supposed to help with you finishing your layup animations and I will miss completely wide open layups which is extremely frustrating out there there's a high level of inconsistency in consistent finisher so although some people feel the badge is super golden and i've seen it work way better for bigger and taller players that's what i can say about consistent finisher is that for taller players it seems to really uh increase their finishing uh completion rate or the success of their finishing so that's something to consider contact finisher on gold is a must-have contact finisher it will get you your layup and dunk animations through contact you'll be able to complete them through contact as opposed to getting caught up in some real weak uh, contact animation that puts you at like the um the worst end of that animation so i'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced that you're going up for a dunk you end up in a layup animation and that's probably due to contact finisher and relentless finisher as well so cross key scorer i'm not going to speak too much about cross key a cross key is like the dirk nowinski badge is when this has it's like a close dribble pull-ups and uh when you're moving across the paint from left to right cross key scorer will, will kick in deep hooks now deep hooks i gotta tell you guys man if you're not familiar with deep hooks you may want to consider equipping the badge considering that you have the attributes to accommodate having the deep hooks badge equipped deep hooks i think falls in line with close shots and close shots are extremely dominant in NBA 2K20 so you may want to consider that if you have the attributes to back up the deep hooks badge drop stepper I again the same with back down punisher drop stepper seems to be although I love drop stepping I had a big in the beginning of the year got him up to 99 I had to put him away because I created him wrong I didn't know what the patches were gonna lead us into I didn't know what type of game 2K20 was gonna turn into so I had to eliminate my big and I can no longer use him in the game as effectively as I should be able to as a big so but I would always drop step and I like the drop stepper badge but unfortunately again you end up losing the ball if you can't equip a badge like unpluckable now if you have unpluckable on and you're drop stepping players out there then you may be able to really utilize uh, uh, the full effectiveness of the drop stepper badge fancy footwork as you can see I no longer got fancy footwork equipped and if you guys are not familiar with NBA Toots, please go check him out. He has a very detailed video about fancy footwork and whether or not you guys should equip it. And in my opinion, I've been preaching this for a little while now. I tried taking it off a maybe a few weeks ago i tried dropping it down to bronze and then i took it off completely but even at bronze i noticed that i was hop stepping better or there was very little difference in the actual hop step maneuver the, the actual motion of the hop step there's no difference so nba 2's dropped the video with hall of fame and no badge at all side by side the actual animation your hop step animation is only tied into your layup package that's not going to change at all what fancy footwork does actually change is how the defender reacts so if you got it at hall of fame there's a slight stun 
And sure enough, if you got enough finishing, if you got enough finishing badges out there, then you may want to consider the um, the fancy footwork badge just for that slight stun that you get. The defender that he gets like stun, sort of like Tai Handu's badge. Uh, he'll get a slight stun, which allows uh, badges like contact finisher, consistent finisher, acrobat, and slithery to kind of accommodate your finishing out there because when you with that slight little stun you will get an opportunity to go up but i gotta tell you man in my opinion i don't recommend fancy footwork it's just my opinion man you guys may be goaded with the fancy footwork badge but if you feel you're goaded with the fancy footwork badge please understand that it's not the actual animation the hop animation is no better or worse with or without the fancy footwork badge is the actual stun that the defender in other words if there's no defender in the paint and you you go into your hops that fancy footwork is not gonna activate and that was uh, detailed in NBA 2's video so go check him out man he, he's got great content uh, fast break finisher I can't I can't consider equipping fast break finisher sorry I'm not even gonna talk about fast break finisher because it's supposed to give you a boost but you know I, I just I think it gives you like a takeover what is it yeah boost to your takeover meter when you successfully dunk on a fast break so it's something to consider if you're trying to get your team takeover up or things like that giant slayer another badge that NBA 2's reviewed not too long ago I think yesterday the day before yesterday and another badge that I've tried at the highest level and I'm 6'5 and I can't recommend it at 6'5 or higher and I'm saying 6'5 or higher man I, I you gotta hear me when I say that man because I have it on a 6'5 now I may consider and this is when in park I may consider the giant slayer badge re-equipping it in pro-am as when I'm trying to run the point guard position I get opportunities to drive in and in pro-am I'm definitely going to run into a taller defender so there's going to be a center in the paint or something like that that's going to attempt to get a block on my player and then I may consider having giant slayer equipped but I would recommend this badge for players that are 6'4 and under highly recommend it for 6'3 players and you can equip giant slayer at a really high level and you'll get the full benefits of what the giant slayer badge has to offer but six five and higher i'm sorry man i'm not seeing it out there i've again i've had this badge equipped plenty of times in combination with a multitude of different badges and still missing layups out there completely frustrated so i don't like the giant slayer badge per se you know it has a situational that's what i will say giant slayer is situational if you equip it in the right situation you probably get the full benefits of giant slayer so we're going to keep this going with lob city finisher never had it and complete lay um ollie you dunks at a high rate i have man maybe over a hundred clips of just going crazy with alley oops man so lob city finisher in my opinion for my player is not absolutely necessary but if you guys are out there going crazy with lob city finisher please let us know um I'd say I complete at about a 90% rate something like that at my alley oops so if you are if I complete at 90%, that's suitable for me. I don't need higher than 90 or 95%. I don't need anything higher than that. So I know a lot of you guys may want to complete at 100%. Maybe you want to consider the Lob City Finisher Badge. Pick and Roller. If you're not familiar with Pick and Roller, you get the animation after the screen that allows you to kind of speed boost toward the rack. So Pick and Roller is definitely a badge. If you got a high amount of uh, finishing badges, left you might want to consider this on gold because it'll give you that speed boost animation and i'm sure you get yeah shot percentage increase so if you get a shot percentage increase and you're having trouble finishing layups out there that shot percentage increase might help you out a bit out there pro touch man gives an additional boost for having good layup timing another badge that i've tried in combination with a multitude of other badges at the highest level and still miss out there this badge is inconsistent such as consistent finisher in the sense that 
I feel and, and people have their own ideas and concept of when to use Pro Touch. Some people will tell you it's only for bigs and and uh, you got to be six five with with uh, you know uh, uh, ashy kneecaps and you'll be able to finish in the paint with Pro Touch. And I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? I always put lotion on my kneecaps. Why would I need ashy kneecaps to finish in the paint? So this is the type of um, ideas that people got in their heads. These are the type of comments that I received. Like, yo, you need to bend your left pinky when you're going up and then you'll finish. I'm like, nah. Be the Pro Touch Bash doesn't tell me anything about bending my left pinky. It's not doesn't say anything in the description. But anyway, Pro Touch is heavily um, inconsistent in my opinion as a 6'5 two-way slashing playmaker. Um, we're going to move on on. Pick Boss. Oh, oh, Pick Boss. Imagine Pick Boss. <laughs> they should have a Pick Boss badge. That's what they should have. Maybe that's Brick Wall. But anyway, Put Back Boss. Um, if you could run it on gold, this, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, I haven't seen anybody grabbing the board and putting it back down. Not not consistently. There's a couple of players that I would say that are, they look like they're really tough to guard into in, in the paint. So I got to say, I don't I don't think it's highly due to the putback boss. But if it is, I, I guess I like your feedback on this badge because I'm only going by what I see from my high level of experience playing NBA 2K20. I got a ton of games played in Pro-Am, Rec, and also the park. I mean, a ton. We play the game every day. So um, I got to say, this is a rare occasion when I see complete dominance in the paint. Uh, Relentless Finisher. A badge that I highly recommend at a high level. So especially for Pro Am or Rec. If you're out there in Pro Am or Rec and you want to continuously continuously finish through contact, then Relentless Finisher is your badge. Goes without saying. Um, and a badge that I didn't recommend for a long while. And then you know after patch ten, I started noticing the full effects of Relentless Finisher, and it's, it feels to me like it's making a good good enough comeback to help with your finishing out there. Slithery Finisher. Um, I think the entire community really likes Slithery Finisher, so if you could put this at gold or higher, then that's going to be great for you guys. But at gold, you cannot go wrong. It's one of the best gold badges that you can put on your player out there, so Slithery Finisher is, a, is in my opinion, a must-have badge. Teardropper, unfortunately, I wish was much better. I wish that Teardropper was a much better badge to have out there. Unfortunately, they didn't get the mechanics right for the Teardropper badge, so you put yourself at a disadvantage if you out there trying to take teardrops um i don't know what what was wrong with the teardropper badge because it's a great concept to incorporate into you know just your game in general and i would love to have uh or have the opportunity to take teardrops out there let's move on uh shooting badges i don't want to make the video too long I'm not gonna go through each one. We're gonna go through some of the main ones. Catch and shoot on gold only, gold or higher only if you have a high shooting shooting rating. If you have a low 70 or below shooting rating, bronze is good enough for your catch and shoot. Actually, 2K Labs say you don't want to have it any higher if you have a lower shooting rating. You just bronze is good enough. I'm actually shooting great out there off the catch and shoot. It seems like it boosts my shooting tremendously off a of catch and shoot, which allows me to shoot all over the perimeter from the corner to the top everywhere. I'm shooting at a decent and suitable. It's suitable for me. But um, clutch shooter, a great badge that you may want to consider. A lot of people are sleeping on clutch shooter, but it is a great badge that you can utilize at the, I think it's the fourth quarter or something like that in Pro-Am. But after you hit a certain amount of points in park and maybe like 16 points or something like that or lower i'm not exactly sure but people do talk about the clutch shooter badge and you may want to consider equipping that at gold if you have enough badges to spread out corner specialist at silver <clears throat> i have it at silver at gold i don't know if it's highly recommended i can't recommend it at gold um i think gold will probably be overkill so uh you know if we're talking about the best gold badges then you want to get into your diamond shooting badge setup and if you don't know what the pros use out there for their shooting 
they use a diamond setup and what they mean by diamond is that it's going to be dead eye green machine quick draw and hot zone those are your primary shooting badges and you create sort of a diamond in your badge setup and if you can get those badges on gold considering your jump shot you got to take into consideration what your jump shot is to determine what level you have quick draw on because if you have 38 such as myself quick draw is best to have on silver because higher seems to be inconsistent unless you're a taller player if you're a taller player you may be able to have the opportunity to equip quick draw at a higher level range extender on gold one of my i love what i'm doing with the range extender badge um before patch 10, now a lot of people had so much to say about uh, range extender being or highly active prior to patch 10, and I'm here to debunk that whole concept because it wasn't highly active for me. I live stream the game every single day, so it's, it's, I have documentation of range extender never activating from the areas and where I shot from. Tons of highlight clip shooting without range extender activating, but after patch said there's not a talk about too much about range extender but after patch send the badge is activating almost everywhere i shoot now so i like the range extender badge from either middies to deep middies to the corner shot it's activating and it's noticeable what it's doing for my players so i highly recommend the range extender badge at gold it's a great badge to have at gold um hot zone hunter at gold dead eye at gold green machine at gold quick draw at gold with a with a different shot you're shooting amazing out there great gold badges to equip something you guys may want to consider now let's talk into let's talk about some of these other shots people are hitting a tremendous amount of contested shots now i don't know how you guys are doing it out there but these shots are heavily 50 percent contested and i have a feeling that it has to do with the steady shooter badge and i i gotta say that steady shooter is supposed to penalize your open shots so i I don't necessarily hide like I don't recommend equipping steady shooter but after seeing these contested shots going on a consistent basis and it's like wow you're out there like how is that possible steady shooter may be a badge that you may want to consider equipping I, I you know I can't say 100% whether it's due to dead eye or the combination of dead eye and steady shooter you may want to consider it um you also got pick and popper which gives you a shot percentage boost off a of screen and you got volume shooter that also seems to be a, a fairly decent badge as well um i'm not sure if you should equip it on gold if you're running volume shooter and you find it to be extremely golden please let us know in the comment section below because i don't have a lot of experience with volume shooter but i can't say that people are hitting a tremendous amount of shots after patch sense so it may be due to a couple of other badges outside of our normal setup difficult shots man we ran into a shot creator yesterday that was going crazy with leaning and moving shots so i difficult shots may be making a comeback and i'm going to be running a lot of um tests on the difficult shots badge to see if i can make something happen if i can rearrange these badges and dominate with moving shots i may i may consider difficult shots man i would love to play like a shot creator slippery off ball another badge that you don't notice it until you're guarding somebody that somehow just glitches away from you. And you're like, why is my player stunned? I don't understand what's happening. I was guarding somebody yesterday and they just kept like dipping off from me. And I'm like, yo, but I'm holding the directional pad to follow him, but my player is stuck and this player is gone. It might be due to the slippery off ball badge equipped at a higher level. So let me let me know if you guys are running slippery off boy and how it's working for you because i can't say as a defender i noticed that some players and the, it's a rare occasion when i come across them but some players are just gone and they're not they, he wasn't a fast player but he was fast on the off ball he was something like a a sharp shooting facilitator or something like that real slow dribbling but off ball this man was gone on me so i you know 
that's just what I experienced with that. All right, we're gonna keep this going. Deep phase I like as well if you have the opportunity and the attributes to accommodate a badge like deep phase, that would be a good badge, but it has to suit your playing style. You remember, cause take that all into consideration. You might wanna create a player that incorporates deep phase, difficult shots and deep hooks, things like that. You might wanna consider even a uh, creating a player like that to accommodate those badges because it'll give defense out there a whole different look and a whole different uh, concept on how to play defense. All right, so we're going to go on over to playmaking. Um, I already got my badges set up for gold. Ankle breaker on gold can't go wrong. Bailout badges, the new and golden badge. This badge was always good. Uh, you know, I think the community knows how good the bailout badge is, and, and it's good enough on bronze. But if you want to play like Ticino out there going crazy with bailout, then you could equip it on gold and see the full effects of what bailout has to offer as far as passing out of shots and not having to worry about double teams and losing the rock. Bailout is great. Break starter, people are starting to appreciate break starter. I go with R1L1. That's what I recommend to a lot of players to throw the outlet pass, but people are, are starting to um, see the benefits of the break starter badge as well. Dimer on gold can go wrong. Now, I'm not saying equip this. You should equip it. Hall of Fame. I, we're talking about we're talking about gold badges. So if we're talking about gold badges, what's suitable? What's good enough at gold? Dimer is a good badge to have at gold gold you can equip it at hall of fame and you won't go wrong diamonds a great badge to have same with floor general great badge to have but at gold it's a good badge as well you can't go wrong with equipping it at gold handles for days i recommend high but it's gold is if you only go up to gold handles for days is going to be good for you as well but i recommend handles for days always at the highest level in my opinion uh quick first step another badge always at the highest level at hall of fame for me but you can't go wrong if you have to equip it at gold space creator you're getting a lot of ankles out there with ankle breaker and space creator so if you utilize the right hop step animation, go into your hop jumpers, equip the uh, a hop jumper that works good for you, and utilize those hop jumpers. If you're having trouble utilizing those hop jumpers, either tap box while you're running to the right or left, any, any direction really. If you tap box, you'll get a hop step animation. If you hold it, then you go into a shot. If you let go of it, you can dribble out of it. Now that's the, not the only way to um, activate your hop jump you can also use your right analog stick by pressing down or any direction on your analog stick and he'll go into a hop jumper just hold it for a half a second or something like that and he'll go into the hop jumper animation if you hold if you continue to hold your right stick he'll go into a jump shot if you let it go then you can dribble out of it uh, unpluckable <clears throat> I gotta say man Unpluckable is not a badge that I would say equip at the gold level. Silver seems to work the best for unpluckable and high level competition. I run it on bronze in the park, but when I'm ready for like higher level competition, I run it at silver. Gold, I can't say that you would want to equip it at gold. That's my personal opinion for unpluckable. Uh, people are talking about downhill to get that speed. Um, if you have enough badges to spread for downhill, you may want to consider it. At gold, you can't go wrong with downhill as well, but that's only, in my opinion, if you have enough badges to spread. A lot of people were telling me about stop and go yesterday, and it's, it's a new badge that I have to revisit and reanalyze. Um, I can't say I've done a ton of tests on stop and go and I, I don't see it man I just don't see it's my personal opinion needle threader a great badge to have I've I've equipped it up to sil I tried it on Hall of Fame but silver seems to work really well I gold I can't recommend gold I, I don't think you could go wrong with putting needle thread on gold but if, if you're saying should I put needle thread on gold and then put one of these other badges down no I, I don't recommend that. Have, put the other badges up, and if you have an opportunity to increase Needle Threader, you won't go wrong on gold. It won't hurt you. That's almost guaranteed. Flashy Passer for Takeover Booster. If you put it out, if you have enough badge points out there, you put it at gold, you can't go wrong. All right, we're going to move on. A Lob City Passer right quick. Lob City Passer, again, I catch Ali Oops like crazy. 
and is never due to the Lob City Passer um, badge. It's always the person who's always passed me these um, these lobs never had Lob City Passer, and me catching lobs never was due to Lob City Finisher. So I, I gotta tell you, man, I, I I don't know the importance of those badges, but I don't recommend them at gold or any level for that matter. Go um, defensive badges. I set them up as gold for you guys just for the content but if i had to choose the best gold badges clamps intimidator pickpocket with tireless defender on gold and then rim protector and chase down on bronze just to accommodate some uh some blocking animations and and help with those chase down blocks as well but um you can't go wrong with this lineup on gold with intimidator pickpocket tireless defender and clamps defensive leader another badge you can't go wrong with on gold box a great badge on gold but i don't recommend equipping it that high if you have a great box out iq you can hold the box but if you're a smaller center going up against two seven threes excuse me box on gold may be a great badge brick wall on gold can't go wrong with brick wall on gold if you're setting big bodies out there brick wall on gold would be great but interceptor on gold man i've tried this at the highest level gold silver and bronze hall of fame you're getting these weird lunge animations that just seem it just seems like Hall of Fame is overkill for my build. Gold, the same thing. Weird lunge animations. I tried that on bronze just yet. I, I mean, I did every level for Interceptor. Bronze just yesterday still gave me those weird lunge animations and then it gave me the steal. It's, I mean, it's really frustrating when you see your player actually queuing up this the passing lane steal. You're queued up to get the passing lane steal, but it's almost like 2K's mechanics are so uh, broken that the dude just lunges completely out the way and the pass just gets through. And some people may say that's due to Needle Threader. And I say I've run Needle Threader and watched sensors glitch to the rock when I'm trying to make a pass, you know, to, to my shooter at the perimeter and I'm like how does this sensor glitch to the rise right? frustrating it's, it's disgusting almost but Heart crush, heart crusher, limit the takeover, off ball pass, a good badge, but I can't say I recommend that I go. Pick dodger is a good badge. I've been running it as silver, and I don't think you can go wrong if you have an opportunity to equip it at gold. Pogo stick, I love pogo stick in my opinion, a good badge. If you're big out there, you're trying to equip it on gold. I don't think you can go wrong with pogo stick as hands up defense is broken out there. Lightning reflexes, I don't recommend it at gold. I don't know. I've tried it. At Hall of Fame again, another badge, Hall of Fame, and all the way down gold, silver, bronze. I don't see it, coach. I just don't see the full effectiveness or or the consistency of lightning reflexes. And it's supposed to be a complimentary badge where it increases the effectiveness of some other some of these other badges. So I, I just don't see it. I've been running it a lot, testing it out, and I, I wish I, I wish I saw more out of the lightning reflexes badge. Moving truck on gold, defensive leader on gold, great badges to have. I like the moving truck as it dumps your weight on So If you're big out there, over post move lockdown. I equip moving truck over post move lockdown any day of the week. Post move lockdown activates way more, but that doesn't mean that it's activating effectively. It doesn't seem like it's is uh doing anything when it activates the person is still going to his motion it, it just it just seems to activate it doesn't do anything in my opinion but moving truck on the other hand dumps your weight onto the opponent which forces the ball handler who's in the post to pick up the rock and have to pass out to our passing lane defense and that's what we want to see we want to see that big man pick up the rock and have to pass out because their pass ratings are so low their passing attributes are low most of the time and that gives us an easy passing lane steal so i like po uh, i like moving truck worm I can't recommend the worm badge because the animation takes too long. But I have, I will say, I have been seeing a lot more. Uh, I guess how do how do you say um, worm animations that seem to to be a lot quicker. So I, in recent days, I've been seeing that. So you may want to consider giving worm a try and see how it works out for you on gold trapper on gold. If you have to, if you you know you have an opportunity or you have enough badges to spread out, you can't go wrong with Trapper. In my opinion, from what I've seen, Trapper works best when you're um, 
when you're playing with a teammate that has Trapper as well. We're going to go on over to Rebound Chaser. I like the Rebound Chaser badge as it has a ton of rebound uh, 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 grab animations in, tied into the badge. So you may want to consider gold. You can't go wrong with Rebound Chaser at gold or higher. I like the Rebound Chaser badge. I, I want those animations. I actually want to equip it on my player to see how it works for a guard. But I like Rebound Chaser and I think I've gone over every every badge here for defense so these are the badges that I think are best at gold. If you guys have a difference of opinion or you want to share your thoughts on some of these badges, please consider leaving a comment in the comment section below, or you can stay connected with us and create some dialogue in our Discord. We would love to have you join. We're pulling up on a thousand members in Discord, and that's a thousand 2K players just looking to run, create dialogue, talk about badges, builds, and everything that's going on in NBA 2K20. I hope Hope you guys enjoyed this video found it helpful and informative and if you did please consider subscribing to our channel as we're gonna have a ton of nba 2k20 content coming your way catch you guys on the next video